saying what we wanted to say, at least not what I wanted to say. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, everyone sitting on there, are biz they're business people. Why would you agree to a resolution and there's no contract and, and sign off on what's being presented to us? And we don't even know what's being presented to us, but it doesn't make sense. Okay. Um all right, Mr. Evans brings up a point. I think that um, approving the resolution doesn't necessarily mean an automatic approval of the contract. Would that be fair? No, sir. I mean, right now, there's no, unless this board directs otherwise, this, this, there's no, I, I did not anticipate this contract would come back to the board of commissioners. Yeah. That's, that's what this whole resolution is about. Do you want it to come back to you? Mr. Martin, can, can we separately from this resolution, um, and, and maybe Mr. Lawson, I think everybody on this board is very conscious of the work that people have put in and want to make sure that the best possible scenario can come out, whether it be continuing employment with a private contractor, relocating to another county department, seeking early retirement, or in some manner. Um, can we have a special... special... Um, observance of these employees and a program to help place them aside over and above from the contract um, you know I don't I don't think we're not talking about as a contract tonight what we're talking about is a resolution and then what we're talking about is our employees as county employees and what their future is so what I'm asking is can, can what do you need as a commitment from this board that each of these ind individual employees will just not will have the opportunities. I think that's a part of the, the current county uh, personnel ordinance that that uh, person who is subject to a reduction in force is, is given uh, priority consideration for other positions for which they qualify. So that's already in place. Uh, we can be di diligent in reviewing that and doing the best job we can do to try to do that. Uh, with respect to longevity and the concern there, I, I would propose that, that we can handle that uh, and we can bring you back a proposal on how to do that or I, I think it would be along the lines of either a severance and perhaps that's the right word this is really they're, they're being severed from county employment as a result of no fault of their own so I think this really is a severance uh, payment compensation for, for severance which could be equivalent to their what they would otherwise have received in terms of longevity and all their other f annual uh, pay out of annual leave and, and the other things that any normal employee who left the county would be paid for. But I think the one, it seems to me the one critical piece here in terms of their compensation is that uh, they are being severed in essence from, uh, with no fault of their own. So I think a severance pay of equivalent of the longevity they would have otherwise earned. If they are still employed on the date of the transition to the private firm, then I think we can handle that. Uh, if that's the sentiment of the board, then we can handle that with your action to do so tonight. So if they are not placed with uh, again on a transfer, lateral transfer in the county department, you're recommending that severance be considered? Uh, yes. Actually, I, w I would recommend that severance be considered uh, regardless if they're placed with another department. Because the severance actually is the longevity that they would have qualified otherwise okay. qualified for November 30th. Okay, Commissioner Melvin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think that that this needs to come back to the board commissioners because I feel there's commissioners on this board that that wants to make sure that our employees are covered, uh, knowing that the Civic Center Commission will do what's right for in the negotiation. But at the end of the day, I feel like it needs to come back to the board of commissioners for us to feel better about the situation. Now that's good. Okay. Well, the anti-contract. Okay. Um, that being said, there still is a motion on the table. What's the motion? You second it. You second it. You second it. <laughs> the motion was not to approve the concurring resolution that's that's on the agenda. Okay, that does that then. Until, until we receive a contract spe uh, specified what is what. Right. I mean, to me, to me, um, colleague, 
It just doesn't make sense for us to approve a resolution, and we don't even know what's, it, what's, what's going to be in the contract. I mean, we, we, we may be blindsided. Who knows? You know, it's not that I don't have faith in the, um, in the Civic Center Commission, right. but since they allowed us to have our two cents, I think our two cents should be present a contract to us let us go over it with our attorney, and then we decide whether or not we want to support the resolution or not. I'm not going to support it. I think it's different. That's what I support right now. That's not. Okay. Um, that's what we, do. We, we have reheard the motion, and uh, it has been seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Which motion? Okay. The motion is not to approve. Um, it brought out a little bit of... But I, I am not good. Yeah. I mean, is the spirit of what I'm hearing here to do what Ed, what Ed is saying and what Charles is saying, are they along the same line? Um, in my in my feeling is these are two completely separate matters: the contract and the resolution. And I think that we are never going to be in a position to negotiate for the people. I think we do that separately through our county manager and our personnel department, and that should in no way be part of any contract negotiation with private management. But it can be, we can, we can assume that responsibility as a board. But I just, don't, I, I don't believe, but not in, in my opinion only, that not approving this because you don't have a contract is not in the spirit of what this resolution is in any way. So, um, I, I I think we're getting w too far in the weeds that we're lost on this one, and I, I think that we're we're a little. I, I'm not going to say confused because it's it's a confusing thing. But um, Mr. Chairman, maybe I can add some clarity. Yeah. If the uh -huh. The bottom line is this, if, the, if, the, if we have a contract for the Civic Center Commission next Tuesday on the 24th and they approve it, they're fine with it, they approve it, does this board want it to, to vote on that contract before it is finalized with, with, the, with Global Spectrum? That's what I'm really trying to get. I think that's a yes. We don't have the authority to. I mean, sure we do. If you prescribe that as a term of this particular transaction, y y yes, you would. We do. Okay. All right. Ed, uh, Commissioner Mellon. Um, I'm, it, it's hard for me to uh, sit here and approve something when I haven't seen it. I want to see a contract, and I want to see our employees taken care of. And until that, I don't think it's right that any of us sit here and vote for that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, Vice Chair. I wondered if there was a, well, no, I, I don't wonder anything. Okay, there's a motion. The motion on the table is to not approve this resolution. Correct, Madam Clerk? The motion as stated was we as the Board of Commissioners do not take any action on the resolution until more information is given to us, especially regarding Crown Center employees. Okay. What you yeah. that, that's what's made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion? Vote Commissioner vote. Evans. I'm going to vote for it. Yeah. Commissioner Evans, do you vote for your motion? Yes. Okay. All those opposed? Okay. Now, okay. would you clarify something for me, please? Because I don't know what. I have done because it does not make sense to me because we're we're trying to hold up a contract that we won't sign anyway and how I, and where does that still leave our employees nowhere nowhere it, it passed Commissioner Evans it, it passed okay Okay. It was 41. It's me you voted for. Charles, commit, uh, Chairman Keith voted against that motion. The other four members, including Mr. Evans, voted for it. 
So it passed. Yes. Okay. Yes, cool. yes. All right. Next item on the agenda is item number six, consideration of a request from City of Fayetteville for a 30-foot easement on the county property located on Washington Drive, Little Cross Creek Trail. Um, I move. Who, who oh. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You want five minutes? Yeah. Right, can we take a five-minute break? Thank you.
Uh, yeah. more, there's more information that we'd like to share at this time. So we would like to go back and revisit it right now. Uh, yeah, we, we've been, uh, there's additional information yes, that, is. yes. <laughs> Vote again. Okay, at this time I'd like to call County Manager James Martin to discuss personnel. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, to, to open up discussion again, all those in favor? Mr. Evans? Again. Huh? He said his vote was no. He said no. No. Okay. So, um, Madam Chair, Madam Clerk, you get that? I did. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. you Mr. Martin. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, members of the board. Hey, you I think, talk. I think what I'm, what I'm hearing. Oh, well, look. I think we've already discussed it. We've already got the marching orders on. Order. Right, where can I get that? I button? mean, my, my thing is, why are we going back to revisit the what they had to they had time during the break to go and call people and find out some more information to bring it back to the table. It should have been done before to me. Oh, God. Maybe I should hold it. Okay. Um, the county manager has, has uh, the mic, Mr. Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. What I'm hearing tonight on the discussion about the employee side, the, the county personnel ordinance provides for priority consideration of employees who get uh, reductions in force, in force notices and who uh, may have been reduced in force. That would be a per person who is not picked up by Global Spectrum, who chooses not to go to Global Spectrum. They can, either way, if they don't go with Global Spectrum, then there's priority consideration for those employees uh, as a result of all this process. And priority consideration means they, in essence, uh, they would be interviewed for a position. If they, if they qualify for what the department is looking for, they, in essence, move to the top of the list. And so that, that gives the priority consideration, I think, for, for anybody involved who, does not, who chooses not to go with uh, Global Spectrum. With respect to the, uh, to the issue of, of longevity, I think we do have a precedent here in the sense that this is the first privatization that I'm aware of the county's ever done and, and the first time we've reduced employees as a result of privatization. Rather than, than that being termed longevity pay, I would propose to you and recommend to you that, that you uh, authorize us to grant those employees who are in, still employed with the Crown on the date of the transition, whatever that date is, if it's November 1st uh, or any time prior to the, uh, the no November 30th date, that the county be authorized, the management be authorized to offer those employees a severance pay equivalent to and based on the same calculation as, as they would have gotten for um, for longevity. That would be the essence of the recommendation. Okay. Now, I will tell you this, just as a, another aside. If this thing goes beyond November 30th for, before the transition, then it would be a moot issue. I mean, they would get longevity. Yeah, would yeah. They, but so, they would only get so, it if they were still employed. If they were employed on November 30th. If they were to resign or leave prior to that, then they're not eligible. That's true. Okay. That's true. Yeah, and, and in the meantime, the other critical date in terms of something transitioning, the, the contract transitioning before November 30th, I, they would, I think we would need to have them still employed on the date of the transition, perhaps November 1st. Okay. Mr. Chairman, now yeah. what the manager just described, that sounds reasonable to me, and I think we as a board would embrace that. So I think that, that is one of the issues that's hanging out there. Well, it's actually two things, I guess. We would embrace that. Okay, another question, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Sure. All right, <clears throat> is there, how strong or how important is it for us to see the contract before it's finalized? How important is that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the proof, but at least see it. If I might offer a little bit of insight, let me remind you, the commission has the authority to contract subject to anything prescribed by the board. Now, I know you've had a lot of discussion, but the board still really has not prescribed any conditions on this at this point. Conditions like what? Like, that, that's what this resolution was. It's okay to go forward with private management. You could say, no, you can't do private management. Or you could say, you can do private, this contract if the board of commissioners is a party and has to approve it also, or, you know, we're, so we have some options. We, we can go all kind of directions there. Yeah, but, but, yes. you, but you haven't. At this stage, you haven't. So you really need to get the input from the commission 
in terms of looking at it before the commission, what if you want to do something, but unless you just tell the commission that it's going to be this way, I mean, I, I, I think the way the system works and the way the statute it contemplates, the commission would really be coming up with this contract first. You know, it, it'd be something the commission was, was, was approved because the commission is still going to have the long-term oversight and responsibility for implementing this. Okay, Madam Vice Chair. I was just wondering if we, excuse me, I'm still, I guess going around in this circle, because it sounds like we're trying to build this bicycle while we're riding it, kind of, sort of, a little bit. But, and we got two companies, the, count, the County of Cumberland and the Civic Center. But look, can we just move that we approve the uh, Civic Center's decision to contract for private management without all the other language? Is that enough? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's your resolution. That would be appropriate. I mean, I think that really is what it is. What? Can I add yes. I would like to add in the severance pay part about it. Let's, let's do that part separately because it's really not a part of the global, the global no. term. Okay. Well, first of all, I have two motions. One is what the manager just said. That's okay. We agree on that. Second. Mm -hmm. Carry the motion. I'm going to call the question. Okay. The, the, now, the, is that going to be a part of the contract? No. Separately. It doesn't need to be. Okay. The, the, no. This is, this is um, that severance pay will be offered to all Crown employees still employed at the time of private management contract. The day of the transition. Or, or, or the November 30th, uh, if they're still employed. Right. As per our, That's right. cool. Purpose. That's the motion. Okay. We, that, that is the motion on the table right now. Mr. Evans, do you understand that motion? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Um, what, we, what we are saying is that all Crown employees who are still employed as of the first date of private contract, will receive severance pay um, uh, with the same formula that they would receive if they were uh, county employees as longevity pay. That they will receive severance pay. But, okay, are we talking about just those that are, uh, that's up for retirement? Negative. Are we talking about everyone? Everyone. Everyone. Everybody. Everyone who would qualify. Every, everyone who would qualify that is employed at right. the time of private management. Right. Everybody that's qualified for severance pay besides management. Is that what you're saying? Mm. No. Okay, well, say it again, please, sir. I'm sorry. Everyone who is qualified for longevity pay will be paid severance pay if they're still employed by the Crown Coliseum at the time of private management. Right. I got you. Okay, is there any, uh, that's the motion on the table. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, some more information might be helpful. My understanding is that there are currently 22 of the 22, 28 employees left out there who are eligible, would be eligible for longevity if they were still there on November 30th. So you're talking about what you're describing now applies to 22, 22 of the employees. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. How many other employees, how many are, that's not consistent, that's not available for that, sir? Right now there are six. You have there, will only, there will only be six. And they have to have been here three years to qualify. Is that what you said? Other, other than the 22 that will be qualified. Mr. Evans, the best information I have as of today, there were 28 employees left, 22 of them qualify for longevity or okay. severance. Well, Chairman, and, and I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm listening to our county attorney. He said, to his best of his knowledge, when we don't have a contract, we don't know anything. We don't know anything. We're just going on hearsay, guesses, and maybe even some promises. Now, I, 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 and I'm not, no with it. I'm not with it. We have to Thank have you. some surety when it comes to our employees, and I'm not supporting that motion. Sure. Okay. Now, however you want to dress it up, you can dress it up. As my colleague would say, you can put a uh, lipstick on a pig and steal a pig. <laughs> it's not right. 
Okay, at this time, all, uh, we're going to call for the vote. Uh, all those in favor of a um, severance package to Crown employees who will be employed um, at the time of private management, um, raise your right hand. Mr. Evans? I go with it. Okay. Mr. Evans? Mr. Charles, your vote, sir? My vote? Yes, sir. I'm against. That's a no. Is it? No. No. Okay. We have Commissioners Melvin, Council. I'm with it. King and Chairman Keith voting in favor. Commissioner Evans voting in opposition. The motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me clarify one thing for that for the reading of that motion too. You said at the time of, of, uh, of transition to private management, that probably should clarify that would be limited as long as it's before December the 1st because these folks are going to qualify for longevity if it doesn't have four And I, I had said that, or November 30th. But you, but, but you know what, uh, oh. uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Evans. Mr. Chairman. Put that phone over here so I can. I, I, I'm sorry, Commissioner Evans. Can you say again, please? Yes, um, and, and 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 I'm done with it after this. But I can't believe the four of you sat there and approved this without a written contract in front of you. Let me. I cannot believe it. Uh, okay. You thank, thank you, you commi thank you, Commissioner Evans. You're uh, quite welcome. Okay, um, Madam Vice Chair, you uh, had a comment. No. Okay. Uh, was there any other discussion on any of the items that has been talked about in reference to the Crown Coliseum? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner King. Okay. Uh, I want to go back. Um, I want to see something, but I don't know what I want to see. Uh, I feel like we as a Board of Commissioners ought to see a draft or see a something before it's finalized. Oh, so please. Uh, I, I just think that. I, I think that... Uh, before it's affirmed or accepted or whatever, we are ultimately responsible. And, and we ought to know what we're responsible for. I, I just can't give that, that, it, that uh, the, the facility just can't blanch authority to, to go forward the way we're talking about going forward. I think we ought to see it. That's, that's my point. Now, if we don't have the votes to make that happen, I'm, I'm not going to have a long discussion about that. But I just believe that uh, as commissioners, we ought to have some idea of what's in the contract. Okay. That's now, all I'm saying. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm saying that that uh, I'm not saying we got to be the, the, the sign off on in, in finality, but at least let us see it or let us have our give our thoughts about it or something. I just can't see just giving to this, just giving to the to, to the, the crown facility, and we just. They have no input at all. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, but, uh, Commissioner Melvin? I'm through. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner King, I, you're absolutely correct. I cannot sit up here and, and vote uh, for a contract that I haven't seen when, when seven commissioners of this county is responsible uh, for the well-being of the Crown Coliseum. Okay. So, anyway. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Evans. Thank you, sir. I think that was the point that I was trying to make. Even with the, I mean, even with the employee, I mean, I cannot believe that you're going to support a resolution for something that you hadn't even seen yet. We don't that. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. But you just turned around and negated everything that we did 20 minutes or 30 minutes ago and move forward with the resolution. It didn't make sense. Uh, um, it didn't make sense. I, 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 I don't think there's a vote. There's not a vote or, or a motion on the table for anything new um, on that. Um, if, if I could, uh, Mr. Moorfield, uh, there, there is a, a portion in that resolution where you talked about the goal of the Board of Commissioners is that the complex become financially self-sustaining as possible. Mm -hmm. To, and to that end, that the food and beverage tax subsidy allocated to the complex may be used for major maintenance and improvements to the facilities. 
Um, why are we restricting that money? I know that there is some verbiage in the state statute. Because of that verbiage. Uh, okay. All right. It, it, but but the, the question is, it may be used, which means which is a long way from it shall be used. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I don't see any need for an additional um, vote, vote or or anything else. So we we've voted earlier to not approve the resolution, and I think that's what we're hearing, right? Well, I'm hearing two votes for, for us to go to take a look at contract. Well, uh, but by not approving the resolution, they don't have the authority to do that. Correct? We can create what we want to create. That's not what the attorney has been saying. All night long, he's been saying we can put in the kind of requirements we want to. But you still haven't put in the requirements out there. Well, one of those requirements, I'm asking to see the contract. Well, well, we didn't move I, to I, do I, that. But, but, All for motion. I mean, but, Maybe we should take it in its entirety just just to see the contract. I mean, do you want to know what your end game is? May I suggest that a resolution of all this would be uh, uh, a direction that the that the uh, commission, when it considers this contract, direct it, or once it considers it, that it direct its recommendations to the board of commissioners, bottom line. And, I can and, live with that. And I think that uh, I think the commission okay. would be okay. Sir, I can live with that. Right. What he just said, I can live with. Okay. Madam Clerk, could you read that motion, please? Uh, Mr. Morfield, could you repeat your motion, that was, that was That was attorney advice. It was a motion, but the attorney's advice would be that the Board of Commissioners set as a condition of this action by the commission that upon the commission negotiating this contract that it refer it or recommend it to the Board of Commissioners for final action. I can live with that. I still move that. Is that, part of the, is that the resolution then? You won't need this resolution then. All right. Motion on the table is your motion. Does your second still stand, Mr. Melvin? Yes, it does. Okay. Mr. Evans, um, were you able to hear that motion? No, I did not. I, I did not understand what was being said. Okay. Ma Madam Clerk, do you have that motion? motion so what, what we're saying, what are we saying now? Uh, Madam, uh, Madam, Ms. White is going to read the motion. I accidentally... Yeah, it was truly an accident. <laughs> 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 I was trying to cut the wrong book. Mr. Chairman, I really was. I'm looking for a vote here. I gotta have a vote. <laughs> I want it over here. <laughs> Let me have the phone. Let me have the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Have mercy. You're supposed to be a short meeting. Okay. Uh, Mr. Evans, are you there? Hello? Mr. Evans, can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, we have not taken any vote. Uh, we apologize for that. Uh, Madam Clerk is going to read the motion on the table. That the Board of Commissioners set as a condition that upon Civic Center Commission consideration of the contract, they recommend it to the Board of County Commissioners. For final action. For final action. Yeah, we have the final sign off on it, yeah. So help me to understand what does that mean? The Board of Commissioners will vote on this contract. The Board of Commissioners will vote on the contract. Yes, sir. But we still will go with the resolution. You won't, you won't need the resolution anymore. You won't need the resolution anymore? No, sir. Okay. Since we don't need the resolution anymore, I think you will have my vote. Okay. Whether you care or not, yeah. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Evans? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Unanimous. Good deal. That's what I'm talking about. Democratic process. I shouldn't have made that. I'm sorry. We're cool. We got there. All right. Mm. Okay, the next item is a consideration of a request from the City of Fable for a 30 foot easement on the county property located on Washington Drive in Little Creek. Uh, this came to Mr. Martin from Michael Gibson. I'm ready for a motion. Oh, okay. Do you have any thoughts on this, Mr. Martin? 
Um, we would recommend the board approve it. It's, it's for an extension of the uh, neutral. the uh, new trail uh, along uh, cross along Creek. the Cross yes, Creek. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. um, so second. second. All right. Motion made. All those in favor? Mr. Evans. Yes. Unanimous. Okay, nominations, boards, and commission. Um, the, the Cumberland County Community Child Protection um, and Fatality Prevention Team. We have two vacancies. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, Sergeant Kimberly Gagnon and Lieutenant Timothy Two. Okay, are there any other nominations? Will those nominations be closed? Um, next item is the Cumberland County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. We have one vacancy. Someone over here. Stephanie yes. Glover. Okay, we have Stephanie Glover. Okay, are there any other nominations? Move those be closed. Um, next item is the Cumberland County Local Emergency Planning Committee. Yes, Commissioner Melvin. Mark Faircloth. We have Mr. Mark Faircloth. Are there any other nominations? Yeah, Those nominations will be closed. Next thing is appointments to boards and considerations. Madam Vice Chair. Uh, I move that we appoint to the Cumberland County Local Emergency Planning Committee, Ms. Marsha Lunt, and to the Southeastern Economic Development Commission, uh, Ms. Amy Cannon. Okay. All right, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Evans? I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, are you in favor of the, these appointments? Sir? Mr. Evans, the, the vote is to, for the, uh, make, making the appointments. Okay. Yes. Okay. Unanimous. I move to be adjourned. Second. Right. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Mr. Evans? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not coming from you, Charles. <laughs>